Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Nine Hole with David and Ian. David, appreciate you always being here, dude. What's uh, what's going on with you? Howdy, howdy. Just another work week done. Sunday afternoon now. And I want to talk some baseball, life, mental skills, whatever we get into today. Okay. I love that. So the uh, the little agenda I had that we were discussing prior to uh, the start here was... And we were going to touch on some uh, some personal stories and experiences coming up through the minor leagues. Uh, maybe talk about hopefully some funny things, not some not some bad things, right? That maybe give the the industry a bad name, but like you know, maybe some some things we had to grind through. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe touch on some myths on how the minor league life is, and see if you know see if those things are true or false. Um, number two, the coolest story you have with an MLB player, past or current, like. To maybe touch on what are I don't know maybe like an experience or just a you know a run in with a, a legend that just changed things for you right something that'll maybe stick with you forever maybe get a little personal and then uh, last thing man some miscellaneous baseball stuff maybe answer some questions maybe touch on some things that are going on around the game of baseball and yeah we'll go from there dude so um. Personal experiences, man. So how how would you say your minor league life was like? How would you say you, the, the minor league conditions, the minor league grind was for you? I mean, I played, I've said this in this podcast before, but I played in junior college in Division two, so it wasn't like, you know, the most glamorous lifestyle. Um, but in like the Appalachian League, so Pulaski, yes. Virginia. Dude, um, my first year. Yeah. So I thought Juco was probably even a little more glamorous than that. Like, uh, what was it? Uh, the White Sox team. There was like chicken coops for uh, like like uh, lockers. You remember that? Like, dude, I, I mean, kind of do. I kind of do remember something like that. Yeah, so like my, we first, there and my like, first full yeah. year was a blur, kind of. You know, you're getting used to the yeah, professional. The ground thing, was like but... all dirt. Yeah, it was that? different. And, yeah, the showers had like one stream of water coming out of it. And yeah, it had, you. Could... There's yeah, a nice so disease in there too. It was horrible. I think that's changed a lot for the better. Um, I think the Blue Jays actually started that, and they were going to pay for kids uh, housing for the year and all that. But a lot of people people don't realize that they're like, "Oh, you're playing professional baseball," and one, they don't really know what if you're in the minor leagues, that's still professional baseball. It's like, 100%. oh, well, you yeah, didn't when play. are you going to get to the pros? Yeah, when are you going to get? Yeah, I hated that question. Same. Um, so they didn't realize that, and then they always thought that you were making some crazy money and. Yeah. Um, it wasn't. They you, you got to they dropped you in a new random city in probably not the best area until you got up to a little higher level and they were like, Go find a place. Yeah, figure it out, dude. Um Pulaski, we stayed in a hotel. We had three so guys in a in a two bedroom room. Dude, I had four I had four so four people in a just a hotel room with two like uh queen beds or two double beds. Yeah. And I slept on an air mattress on the floor. We had that. We had an air mattress in the middle between the two beds, and we did like a okay. rotation. But it was me, a guy named Ernesto Zaragoza, and Mincy Oof. Mincy Chin. I don't know how, but we just all and David together. <laughs> and Chin ended up being like just the designated air mattress guy. Okay, he's from he Taiwan. And I, to this day, if I saw him, I might I might cry happy tears. He was I love so cool. That. Good bond. Yeah, that's but awesome. I, don't, I mean, other than that, like, so it wasn't. It wasn't glamorous, but yeah, it kind of instilled in you uh, a sense of wanting to get out. You know, it's like sure a kid that you know didn't come from much or shooting baskets in his backyard or at the local park, and he's like, "I'm going to make it to the NBA," or whatever. Like, it kind of instilled that kind of sense. Like, I don't want to be at this level anymore. For sure. How am I going to get out? Um, but my advice to get out of that is like I was way too impress- impressionable. Like coaches would tell me something, and I took it maybe too seriously. And it wasn't until I got older that I could take in the information that I thought would be beneficial, but still be coachable. So like I texted you that the other day, I had a coach come up to me. He saw my fastball sinking in um, practice. Like I was playing catch and he's like, Hey, you should only throw your two seam. Like your two seams really good. You should, you should stick to that. So my next outing, my coach got us together, me and the catcher, and was like, hey, I, I want him only throwing his two seam. Like when he throws his fastballs, like no four seams. So I threw like 27. And I was young and stupid. 
but the catcher would just be fastball, 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 too soon, too soon. And I threw like 27 in a row. I was getting like yanked, cracked all over the place. And my pitching coach comes out and he's like, what are you doing? You haven't thrown one off speed in like three, like this, what are you doing? Listening and, to you, man. Yeah. And he's like, I didn't, I wanted you Told to, me to your, do this. Yeah. I was like, I wanted you to throw your two seam, but not every single pitch, like the only fastball, like elevated four seam or something. My catcher was like, oh, so Oof. when you play at that level, you're around a lot of young minded and guys too. And we're all just trying to grow together. hundred percent. So it's, you would say that the the minor league treatment, like that minor league life, it got it improved the higher you you climbed up the ladder, right? So yeah. like it, the treatment the treatment in rookie ball, your first year, whether you come out of high school or college, you'll go to like a, a short season, you know, depending mm-hmm. on the situation and where you know where you're at in your career. But um, you know, you usually go to a short season A or I guess low A or you know rookie ball. That treatment there compared to like. I think for me, the, the the treatment got way noticeable, like way different, way better once I hit double A. You yeah. start, you stop like carrying your bags to the bus, right? That your your clubby or your your road clubby might start packing your bag for you while you're at out at your last game. Right? That's huge. And then, yeah, dude, it makes a difference. But the, also the money's different, right? So you're tipping yeah. your you start tipping your club your clubhouse attendant, your clubhouse manager, the clubby, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you start tipping him more. You also start where the better. money start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything's better, dude. That was going to be one of the things I touched on. But, you know, that's where Soap. you start. Oh, yeah, sh- yeah. Yeah. Shampoo and stuff in the shower. Yeah. Not just it's like nice. hand soap. Dude, <laughs> what? We we're lucky sometimes. You get this. Yeah. It was like dial. Dis- yes. Just hand dis- soap. Just cranking it out. Dude. But, you know, you also start. You're also like surrounded. Not surrounded. But there, the, you get the big leaguers around there. Right. So double yeah. A is kind of where I started. I had a teammate or two that's been up in the show for, you know, he, he debuted already, right. He already got a taste of glory. Like, so you're, you're, you're kind of integrated. They're around you, right. You got a big leaguer or two in the clubhouse. That's kind of where I experienced it for the first time in, in double a, right. And then, you know, they've experienced the money. They've been up there on the big stage, whether they've, you know, they got DFA or they sent back down or, you know, whatever the story is, they're in double a, uh, they're grinding. That's kind of the first time that, you know, I've been around, big leaguers dude but like that's the treatment definitely got noticeably better in double a the hotels got sweeter right the travel still sucks like bus rides dude i'm sure you've had some crazy bus rides yeah like, overnight type stuff um staying in crazy cities Are you in the is it was it the texas league yes yeah. yeah arkansas so i was in the eastern league so that wasn't as bad dude um of travel dude that league a. that league the league that Arkansas is in, I can't even think of it now. But that league's awesome. I loved it. Oh, really? I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I I did well there, right? So I, you know, I loved Bakersfield playing in high A, right? I, yeah. I did well in Bakersfield, so I loved it. But um, <laughs> you never I, got I, to it was play nice in field. high desert, huh? I did play in high desert. I oh, did, but horrible. I didn't get the full. Ex- I didn't get like the full experience. I was just there on a you know an away trip. And it's not like I was hitting home runs, so I really didn't get, I really didn't get to experience it, dude. I don't. I think I played in high A for thirty nine or forty games, and I didn't hit one home run. Really? Yeah, well, dude. if you play, it was Bakersfield was your home. Yeah, that, that was yeah. that was hard. It was like three hundred feet all the way around, but it was like this weird vortex. If you got it up to center field, like it just came right back. Held up. Yeah. Held up, dude. High desert 100%. wasn't like that, but. How about what about like uh, what was your experience with the with the financial situation in the minor leagues like with the pay right so obviously yeah. the higher up you go up the ladder from rookie ball to low A to A to high A to double A to triple A that pay increases a little by little now the rules are different mm-hmm. um, I think there's a you know they're making twenty thirty grand or something like that now in the minor leagues which is I think they have to or something legal yeah I would have killed for that dude especially when I was younger but you know what. You know, you get you get to the double A, triple A yeah. level, and those guys that have touched the big leagues and have come back down, their pay's different. So you start seeing the money a little bit. You start right? seeing and free agents, minor league free that's agents. That's dude, dude. Yeah. Yes, right. That's so where I before I became a minor league free agent, I didn't see any money. So like for the people that don't know, Ian and I, when we were playing, we initially got drafted or signed whatever. We signed a seven year minor league player contract. 
Ian and I got bonuses, whether good, bad, and different. But we were on a seven-year deal with whatever team drafted us. I signed for seventy-five grand. I got fifty after taxes, and I spent that shit in one year, dude. <laughs> yeah. I signed. And then for I went three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars as a like here you go. I got let's give him a chance. And I bought a Xbox three hundred and sixty, and I had a good summer. I ate at uh, some good restaurants. I love that man. <laughs> That's it. But like, it states in that contract, like I don't know the first couple of years, like rookie ball, low A, all that. It's like eleven $1, hundred dollars a month. Yes. And then it goes up like Before double A, taxes, I think is like, yeah, 2100 or something. I don't know. It goes up yes. like a thousand bucks. Yes. It's gross. But yeah. Like, I didn't get any type of real money until I had Tommy John, got released, went and played independent ball, made less money there. And then actually, no, I think I made more money there than I did affiliated. Um, really? I signed a free agent deal. Okay. Um, That's where it's So at. yeah, the, the higher up you get, like, yeah, the money gets better. But when we were playing, it still was horrible. Hundred percent, dude. What about uh, what you got on the best place to go for an away trip in the minor league? So throughout your whole career, whether it's been indie ball, whether it's been you know low A, high A, triple A, where where have you gone where you've had the best trip, best experience? Um, you know whether it's opportunities on the town, right? We have some downtime, or you have an off day, you can go to utilize it. Obviously, I I've. I can only say good things about Las Vegas. I've played yes. in old Vegas, that old Vegas dumpy stadium. Dude, I love that and then, stadium too. I don't know why. Oh my God. I dude. loved it. That stadium, man. I felt like I was in the eighties. Dude, but did you play in the new one? Yeah. The A's. So I like the, the, the new one. Yeah. So that place was unreal. I mean, the bathrooms yes. like, they had like lighted. I get mirrors. lost in that. Dude, yeah. I get lost in that away clubhouse. I get lost. But it was like 30 minutes from the strip, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Huh. So, yeah. Vegas. I mean, that one obviously sticks out. Drew Butera. You know the name? Uh, he yes. was a catcher for the Royals when they won a World Series. It was I know like that him and Salvador Perez. Okay. Like he was in AAA with me, was our main catcher. And he rented a, like, this massive limo jacked up truck to pick us up from what was that town in Vegas where the Aviator Stadium was? It's like summer, Somerset or something. I don't know, like that. I don't remember. But yeah, it picked us up from there and took us to some uh, like nightclub, and we got to skip all the lines. I mean, it's crazy. Like the higher up you get, and the more money you have, the more recognized that you are. But yeah, we went and saw Diplo. <laughs> we, we had like a, I don't know, our own private like pond or something. We're ten feet from Diplo, dude, like, roped off and. We did that, man. We did that with uh, when Jason Worth was yeah. with my my AAA team, man. I've never really experienced anything big league. He was there before. for a while. He was there for almost, yeah. you know, almost. I don't, I don't know if it was a half year or three quarters of a Didn't year. He hook but you up with a suit. He bought me a suit. Yeah, he bought yeah, me a suit. He's like, dude, cool Ian, if, if dude, if you know, if you uh, if you debuted in the big leagues tomorrow, you get to call up. Like, what are you gonna, what are you gonna wear on the show flight? I'm like. I don't know, dude. I got these pair of khakis and like. He's like, like nah, dude. So we were in Vegas, and he took me to. Uh, at first, he Alyssa and I we stayed in this really nice hotel, uh, and then he you know he picked it up, and inside the hotel it was like a whole shopping area, and it had the stitched yeah. uh, store inside. So he got me a suit, he got me like a nice pair of jeans to to wear with a, you know, a jacket, and then uh, an undershirt or two, dude. I still have it. I still have all of it, actually. Like, I still have the shirts, dude. Yeah. I still wear them. It's in 2018. It's like 2023. And see, I was never in that position, but I swear I would like to think that if I got to become like a Jason Worth type of player, I would do that same thing. If I was, you'd on- hope, yeah, exactly. I saw a good guy. I'd be like, hey, man, come with me. Let me take zero. You. Yeah, take zero dollars to be a good person. You know what I mean? But being able to. Yeah. extend that and offer that i mean that's awesome dude i'll never forget that i'll tell i dude, i'll tell my kids about that you know what i mean yeah it's cool to kind of share that dude so uh and besides about- vegas uh el paso i don't know why el paso was sick yeah that stadium it felt like a stadium and the bullpen was behind right field and was all brick and tall and yeah dude i don't know it just felt like close you know i love that spot absolutely yeah. absolutely you felt close there Yep, like I'm this far. I'm like one step away from, away from the big from leagues, the big dude. Leagues. That yeah. that the locker rooms, the whole experience there. That was big league, dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. I yeah, I loved walking El Paso. through the big tunnels and stuff. Like yes, you get to the locker room. 
I mean, it looked like, yeah. So those two stick out to me. I mean, that's obviously AAA. Um, there wasn't a bunch of places like in the lower levels that really that great. Hartford, my double A stadium was like a, a year old when I was playing there. And it okay. was, it was nice, nice. Yeah. It's awesome. How much, how, how much better is the competition between, between st- like when you're going up the ladder? So how, let's just put it into perspective. How much different, how much better is the competition from collegiate baseball to rookie ball or yeah. a ball? Right. And then how much different is the competition from a ball to triple A and rookie ball as a, as a pitcher, in rookie ball, guys don't see the ball out of your hand very well. Like, I could throw three sliders in the dirt in rookie ball, and they would swing over it three times, walk back to the dugout. Next guy, three sliders in the dirt. I mean, it was like, I might stick a fastball every once in a while, but the higher up you get, they spit on pitches, like, out of your hand. They'll, they'll just be like, ball. And I'm like, how, that missed by it that much. How did you? How'd you see that? But more discipline um, in the approach, like they have an approach, right? They're looking yeah. for something. They're yeah, only they're sticking way to more what... discipline. They're not trying to like they proved themselves a little bit. And it's like a little mix, like randomly. I don't know how the Mariners did it, but in with the Rockies, there was always like some random rookie ball kid filling in for like two months or something in AAA. Yes, you know, and he would get random at bats. But that kid was just as hungry or hungrier than you know. And that's what that was weird is the guys that were established there were established for a reason because of their routine and their discipline and all that. And then the kids that were young or just filling in or whatever were like, I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. So yeah. it was, it was different. Higher up. You got way better. Love that. It's awesome, dude. Yeah. I, that makes sense to me. Routine like, plays. I mean, you were, a, you were an outfielder as yeah. a pitcher. I mean, it didn't like you cover more ball. ground in the outfield. Yeah. Rookie ball, probably almost all the way up to high. A. I saw a change in, Double A a little bit, but triple A earlier yeah. saw a change. But like those routine ground balls, pop ups, warning track, you know, those are all caught. Lower levels, those aren't. Like Yeah, it could be doubles, triples. I mean Catel sure. Marte. Catel Marte was my shortstop in low A in short season. And I thought he was the worst infielder I've ever seen in my life. Really? And right now he's like a top five yeah, he's second baseman in the game. Or dope. Absolutely. It's yeah. crazy, man. Like obviously it's all in my experience, dude. Yeah, I love that. I the more that I went up, you know, the ladder, the more I incrementally at like uh just inched closer to the big leagues, man. It's the the pitching, not necessarily the the velocity got different. Dude, anybody can throw not anybody can throw a hundred, but like there's gonna be dudes throwing fucking a hundred miles an hour in college. Yeah. Right? You're gonna face that if you're in an SEC, you know, any type of big time program or conference. Like when you get the rookie ball. You're going to see 100 miles an hour, dude, right? Time, and you yeah. Keep going up. You see 100 miles an hour in the big leagues, dude. That doesn't change. Like, it's still the timing is still like boom, boom, right? Regardless of where you're at. But what I saw is the difference, you know, the higher up I, I went. It's like the 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 off speed, the off speed mm-hmm. pitch. So, like, a guy might have a, a 100 mile an hour fastball that he can't control in rookie ball and then have a like a slider that's sick, right? But he doesn't know where he's putting it. Right, the higher up you go, that that's a little bit more polished. Right, double A, that guy might be able to paint you right a hundred and yeah. have a better idea of his slider and get a swing and miss, and then you know differentiate triple A to the big league. It's like they got three pitches that they can put anywhere they want it, and that should a swing and miss. You know what I mean? Like so, not necessarily the the velo got crazier as i went up it's just it, it was more consistent stuff and yeah put it where the they stuff went. dude exactly i challenge people to, to watch college baseball now and it's nothing against those young kids there's some really really talented guys out there but i'll watch these pitchers on purpose and they'll, they'll miss their spot by three feet you know and i'm like this guy's just throwing the throw and then every once in a while i see a polished uh you know young man out there that's dotting corners and moving the ball up and down and in and out and i'm like whoa this he's 93 94 or something like that's he's got a chance, you know, for sure. But those you kids out it. of college that are 99, 98, you know, they, they start learning how to pitch and they might be 92, 94, which is great. But stuff isn't going to get you out, especially the higher you up you go. I could throw you three nasty change ups in the dirt that start as a strike and you'd be like, nah, nah, nah. You know, that's experience, though. I get it 100%. All right. How about we'll, uh, we'll change, change the pace a little bit, dude. 
go into that. What was your coolest story that you've had with an MLB player, whether it was like a current one or, or you know, a legend? Um, and, and why was it cool? Why did it mean a lot? What yeah, can my, you share? My childhood was a little different. Uh, my dad played quite a while, so um, I've got to be around a lot of those guys, like Ken Griffey Jr., Randy Johnson, Edgar Martinez. Um, one that sticks out the most for me was when I was 11 years old, I had to have brain surgery to remove a benign tumor. Um, but I went in and Jay Buhner, you know, right fielder for the Mariners yeah. for a long time. He was still playing. They, my dad hooked this up and the Mariners, um, were nice enough to do this for me, but Buhner always used to do this thing, like shape fans heads and stuff. Cause he had this famous bald head. Um, but they brought me in there like a week before my surgery or something. And they put me in like the locker room and I got to tour everything. And they sat me down and, uh, <laughs> Jay Buhner, <laughs> Jay Buhner shaved my head. No way. Surgery. Yeah. Brett Boone was there. And this was like, Brett Boone was muscled out. I don't know how he got that big, but, um, I did a fantasy camp with Jose Canseco. That's um, cool. I got some crazy stories about him. And then when I was playing, um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, you get to play with around with so many different guys, but like legend wise, I got to meet my uh, Greg Maddox. My uncle hooked that up. I went and had dinner with That's him. Awesome. And That's awesome. You want to talk about a funny, kind of uh, different minded individual, Greg Maddox. That's Greg and Mike Maddox. So his brother, they were like army brats. They grew up in an army base in Germany and they had to keep things entertaining and there's a reason why he was as good as he was. Uh, I love he's, that. He's different. What about you? It's awesome, dude. Um, so my, let me, uh, let me let this dog out. Okay. Mila. Sorry about that. Just so <clears throat> my, uh, by far the coolest story that I've had, with um you know an mlb player it was it was while i was playing um and it was by my uh, all-time favorite player of just not even close ichiro suzuki mm. coming up through you know the the mariner system got the obviously you know the name right i grew up watching highlights of the dude so i was i grew nice. up a, a little speed guy right so you know it, it was easy for me to kind of just relate watching each row play and you know he had a sick arm he was great at defense just everything he was fast made good contact played small ball so like i that dude made me fall in love with the skill set that i had as like a high school college player you know what i mean and watch mm -hmm. that guy just watch highlights of that guy right and so then i got drafted by the by the mariners obviously went through that went through that system um never debuted with them but went every step of the way through the minor leagues with them um so I got to be in the same locker room as each row a couple times in spring training. Um, he was like a special advisor to the special assistant to the GM or something yeah. like that. Right. They, they created a position for him and they wanted to have that, you know, that figure that in, in the, in the clubhouse around the team advising and helping the team, which is great, smart dude. So I remember I, I took a couple pictures with him and spring, you know, spring, he's just like my idol dude. Uh, I got to, I got to personally meet him. Like D Gordon introduced me to him. He's like, Ian, isn't that your favorite player? I'm like, yeah, dude. He's like, all right, man, let's go. Like, just stuff like that. Yes. So, yeah, dude. <laughs> so I remember, um, I got to talk to him a couple times. I always just asked him about, you know, his routine and what he would do, bunting all this stuff. I just wanted to pick his brain. And his interpreter, um, Alan, was a great dude too, right? So I got to know them a little bit just through my time in AAA and, you know, Ichiro's time there. Um, so. I remember I had gotten traded in 2019 and I made my big league debut uh, with, with the twins, man. And so it was like a year or two later, I think it might've been two years later. So I think it was like 2021 spring training kind of after the COVID year of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, I was with the Cubs and I was, I was playing the Mariners, right? So we were in Peoria and you know where that dugout is. You're the opposing dugout in Peoria. So the, all the traffic goes by you right for the for the home team for the Mariners yeah. or the Padres to get to their dugout. And so I was just sitting on the I was up on the steps of the of the dugout with my hands on the uh on the fence dude and here comes Ichiro like 
everybody's shouting his name, but, you know, everybody, Ichiro, Ichi, Ichi. And, yeah. you know, he's walking with Alan and, um, dude, I'm, he's, he's walking by me and I'm, I just like waved at him, just could not wave at Ichiro as he's walking. I'm like, Hey, Ichiro. And, uh, so Ichiro and Alan, I, his interpreter, they came over to me and Ichiro congratulated me for my, for making it to the big leagues. That's he awesome. said that to me. He said, dude, he didn't say dude, but he said, Ian, congratulations on just making it to the big leagues, like making your dream come true. And I didn't see that. I haven't saw you. Like I've what? Like yeah. he said that to me, dude, and shook my hand and Alan shook my hand too. Like they're just great people. It's just something that like, that'll stick with me forever, dude. Cause what did, you know, what is, what does Ichiro gain from doing that? Like who am I to Ichiro? Right. I'm just, a, yeah. he kind of right? cha- changed the game man. a little bit. Um, I remember that throw he had. He threw a guy out from right field, like a third base. Like, yeah, third base throw that like it got like this far off the ground the yes. whole time. It just levitated all the way there. Yeah, and then like he just like, dude. I was at that game that he broke the single season hit record. I made a plaque really? out of it. Like I have a newspaper article. I have my tickets. Everything. I was eleven years old, and I went to it's incredible. I went to that game, and they won like one hundred and sixteen games or something that year. But he was. I don't know, so disciplined at the plate. And dude, there'd be times that like they needed a home run. And he'd be like, okay, here's a home run. You know, he had power, he had speed, he had gap to gap, line drive potential. Yeah. He could bunt on you. And he had the it's best insane, defense, man. one of the best arms ever. Him and like Vladimir Guerrero, maybe. I don't know who else. Dude, I don't know, but I just remember being in AAA when he was already retired. Yeah. So he was retired. It might have been the year after. It, it was the year he retired or the year after he retired or whatever it was. I'm in AAA. And he's, you know, the special assistant to the GM. I don't remember the position that he was at. And he was still, he would show up to some AAA series or some AAA games. And him him and Alan would be there. And he would throw BP, right? He would hit BP. He yeah. was long tossing. Dude, like he he's in full uniform. And he is long tossing. And running around more than we are, and dude, we're playing tonight. Like we are, like yeah. we're playing tonight. We're in the heart of the season, and this guy's out working us. That's and one he's of the a, he works he's in the always, front office. Yeah, he was always in like a full uniform, right? Dude, it's incredible. He, it was incredible. Yeah, being around that guy, just I seeing how he went about, about his business, the, the Japanese culture, and how they went about their business uh, was all about respect and treating For others, sure. you know, the right way and. You yeah, still, I don't know if you saw the the. I think when the Mariners and uh, the Angels played, I don't remember when it was. I think it was in. I think it was. I don't remember, dude. But I think it was recent. But Shohei and, and Ichiro like met out in center field and they were talking and just looked like two superstars, like one current and you know one legend, right? Yeah. There's one current superstar and then there's one legend and they're just the respectful conversation. Like it's just obviously you, I've would have loved to. Have, been able to hear what they were talking about just but it just i don't know man i agree with everything you're saying it's awesome it's just something i'll be able to tell my kids man it's pretty cool yeah it's cool to hear that humility no each year for me was huge i mean i grew up in seattle and i i was blessed that they gave me opportunity to start my professional career with them and then ended it with the rockies but each year to me was everything like as a young boy trying to learn all that stuff, we all, we all, who didn't do this, you know? Oh yeah. Like, yeah. As a little, as a little kid, like a wiffle ball game or something like, like, ah, oh, I'm Ichiro, I'm Ichiro. Like, no, I want to be Ichiro today. Yeah. We all, we all idolized him. And so for, I can imagine just, you know, Still meeting do. him briefly and then him coming and rem- one, remembering you and two, taking the time to be like, congratulations, Ian. Like you made it to the big ones. That's amazing. It's amazing. Beat my pants. I've no comment, dude. But like that, uh, I think I want to talk about something how I love, there's nothing wrong with getting excited when you do a good job. Yes. There's nothing Ooh. wrong with being pumped up for winning, um, making a great catch, like jump up and be like, yeah, you know, like I love that. But segueing from our Ichiro, you know, respect and all that stuff. Like, yes, for me, even if I hadn't, like, if I just struck out the side in a World Series or whatever, like, I would, I loved acting like I've done it before, even if I hadn't. Like, be pumped up, you know, all that stuff. But the game nowadays, like, it's like Major League Baseball is almost 
implemented this like showboating is so it's like normalized now guys like Manny Machado and the whole Padres I think honestly like I like that but guys are mic'd up during the game and like Manny Machado's talking about wearing Gucci cologne and stuff and I'm like I I get it it's it's fun but also yeah we I sent you to look, told you to look up that video of this high school kid looked like oh, a yeah, specimen dude. he was a, he was a stud yeah but his last high school at bat hits a grand slam or something. They're up 10 to two hits a grand slam. I think it was 12 to two in the fourth. Yeah. 12 to 10 runs or something. And this guy, you would have thought that he just won the world series in Yankee stadium. Home run. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he's like looking at the dugout and yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't, and then it, it changed from like celebrating with his team and getting pumped up to then like it was aimed like you aim yeah. at the other team and now you're kind of like talking shit to the other team and like showboating. Yeah. I don't to, get it to minimize them. You know what so I mean? Has, a cult, it. Yeah. It's not just in baseball, but like as a culture with social media, um, snapped all this stuff. Like, are we breeding this type of shit talking culture that kids are, can't, how do you as coaches or parents or friends or teammates, whatever, like nip down the butt. Like you, th- you think there's one teammate on that that said, dude, what are you doing? No, no, no dude. way. No. So obviously you look at, you look at that action. You look at that action. How does that fly? First of all, I mean, the guys weren't, guys got a purple uniform, right? He's a purple, it's a purple team and he's wearing a, an orange, an orange arm sleeve, right? So yeah. I, not that that has anything to do with it, but if you're running a type ship. Stand out. Yeah. yeah. Are you letting that fly? This guy's got a, I'm not saying he's doing it, but you, you see the, you see the players with eye paint, like it's war paint. They got their face painted. Yeah. What is ready that? Ready going to war with the, you know? Like, I'll tell you what, I had some managers in uh, the minor leagues that I'd be sitting for a little while if I acted like that, right? Yeah, so obviously that, that guy's never face. been humbled. Yeah, I'm sure the high school coach, this guy's a specimen. He's going to UT. He's committed to be a Longhorn. This guy's obviously like, this guy's the dude he, around he, here. He's going to Texas? I think that's why he's wearing an orange oh, like arm sleeve on a purple okay. team to show off, to show off, to announce, to let everybody know, hey, that this right is there's... what I'm doing. Bullshit too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So who's running the ship? Then you say, okay, well, he's a six, 16, 17, 18 year old young man, kid. And uh, like, so obviously his emotions are going to be running stress. So who's guiding the kid? Yeah. Right? I, I don't know. Who's holding them accountable? You're right. Who's, who's the captain of the team? I mean, we who's to get to the point when we wanted to look better than we played. Like I, I liked, I like looking fine or whatever, you know, but there's so many, like we talked about this a little bit, the lower levels of minor league baseball. I'm about six five. Or I'm kind of I'm pretty tall. We would get to our uniform day, or whatever, when they're handing out pants, handing out the stuff, and like there'd be pants that would didn't fit me. Yeah, dude, I, they just they looked horrible. But I was like, whatever. I'm gonna get up to the next level, and maybe they have better pants there. Well, they don't have better pants here. I'm gonna get to the next level. I'm gonna get to the next level. I'm gonna go. I want to get to the level where I can customize my pants and have them right. in, in the back of the tag or whatever, you know. But like, there's kids that nowadays I feel like would be like, I'm not wearing these. I'm gonna go to Dicks or whatever and have a off white color just so I can feel. No, That's right. it doesn't yeah. matter. It's just, it's it's crazy, man. I I don't know. It comes down to who's running the ship, right? Who's uh that just made me think about that players. video because Ichiro, and like I don't know if this is intentional or if it just doesn't like the spotlight. But a guy like Mike Trout, like I've seen one commercial he's ever been on. Like it was like a body armor commercial, or whatever. But he stays out of it. He's, I think, he might be regarded as one of the maybe the best baseball player of all time. But like, yeah, he'll put like this the cowboy hat on and walk through the lock or the dugout after a home run or whatever, and slap hands and laugh and everything. But like I said, I don't know if it's intentional or not. But he does everything the right way. He hits home run, boom, drops the bat, runs the bases. He makes some diving catch. He jumps up. He's like, "Whoa!" But then he's back to business. Hundred percent. He's you're not, not show, like, "Look like at me! Look yeah, what I you're did!" Not, you're not showboating. You're not. Yeah. And I don't putting others down or other teammates like the the, your, the people you're playing against down. Like once it once it kind of turns into that, I mean, you've got a problem. Well, it's, right? it's so it's going to be police somehow. Yeah. Somebody's going to take care of it. So it is it going to be the other team? Is it going to be like a bench clear and brawl, or is you the manager? Or you of like the coach, like, are you gonna handle it? Because this guy looks like a fucking clown. Yeah. In tricolored stuff, running around. You know what I mean? Not Matt, and then putting other right. So 
that's just how I feel. About and that's it. why Obviously, I think I've never coached. League, too, yeah, so I don't Major know. League Baseball needs to be careful about how they go from here. It's a fine line. Yes, I think they need to get more younger kids involved in the game. They need younger kids to take interest in baseball. Is that by wearing big chains and being blingy and taking your time and skipping around the bases? Because you can tell now that high school kids are doing it. And like, well, guys, last night we're doing it in the big leagues, you know, Randy Ozarina or Manny Machado, and I just want to, they're my idols. You know, so how how do you... It's a slippery slope because yeah, now you got a pitch clock, so you can't even yeah mess around during in between. It, it's just like get to it. It's it's crazy. I don't know. It's it's all different. It's all different, and it's continuously changing, dude. MLB is a major. It's a business. I mean, it's a, a whole huge conglomerate that is made to make money. You know, and that and has to damn be good at from, it. yeah, that has to be with people watching the game, attending the game, TV contracts, hot dog sales, whatever. And that starts with people wanting to play baseball. And I think there was a little bit where basketball, hockey, football, for sure, was kind of taken over. And now you might start to see more kids getting involved in baseball again because of some of the rule changes. And it's a quicker game and it's faster paced or whatever. But I don't know. Like if, if I saw my own son doing that, like what what are we doing as parents, coaches, society, any all that? Well, he's going to learn, you know what I mean? That that this kid, I don't know if that's going to fly at that where he's going. I actually like, saw that go on to... LinkedIn. Someone posted on LinkedIn, some old retired baseball player. And I don't want to sound like I'm this like, like this old crotchety grumpy dude because like my dad and his buddies and stuff are so fed up with the way baseball is nowadays. But like everyone on the LinkedIn comments was like, it's too bad that was his last at bat because his next one, he'd be drilled in the neck. Yeah, like dude, I'm just thinking that. about that. So yeah. I, who's going to take care of it? Who's going to police it? Is it going to be the opposing team policing it and like putting him back into his place by either hitting him or worse, a teammate to make him feel it a little bit more? Hey, you, you're you showing us up, dude. You're put you're up by 14 runs. Obviously, you're the superior baseball player and you're and you're showboating and you're rubbing it in our face and you're putting us down like, OK, I'll hit your teammate and I'm going to try to hurt him. Yeah. And I'm gonna try to prove a point. You did that, right? Go ahead and yeah. be mad at me in the situation. You did that. It's that not could... fair for me to judge that kid whole entirely on one clip, but no. I bet if his teammate got hurt, he judging from what I saw from that video, I don't think that kid would care. I'm going to University of Texas. The kid you hit <laughs> is not gonna play college baseball. Yeah, it was that kid you to know? me. Yeah, yeah. it's sad. And I always tell that to the parents I coach. When they're like, little Johnny just went out and he pitched five innings and he threw 247 pitches and he had eight strikeouts. Oh, thank you so much for all your tutelage. He's been great. But I love when they're like, hey, little Johnny did really bad today and he's really sad. Like, do you think you could talk to him? And I'm like, your son's 12 years old. He hasn't been through anything bad. Like a little adversity actually would be good for him. Yeah. When that kid gets to Texas, one, it's going to be hard. And then two, like if he gets a chance to play professional baseball... Like the higher up you go, the harder it is. So I don't know. I wish yeah. that humility. You're learn. Yeah, you to learn. Act like you've done it before. I love that feeling. I just struck out some big time guy. I came in and saved my buddy's runs that were running on first and second. I came in the seventh inning. Sam Howard started the game. Whatever. And I struck out the guy and I walked off. My heart's pumping. I felt like I was going to throw up. But to the fans, they they were like, "Oh, he must have done that before." Yeah. Wow. He was pretty confident walking off there. You sit down and you're like, oh, I got out of it. Yeah. You know, now you kind of look like a psycho to the, the people you're going up against, like you're cool, calm, and collected in the moment. Yeah. So how are you going to get a read on that guy? What kind of like tactical advantage are you going to get on that? You can't. Oh, yeah. It's I pitched in a big league game. Too. I told you that, I think, but I pitched in a big league game and I went with the team to Mexico and then Mexico. we went to um, Florida to play the Twins and I swallowed throw up in my mouth. Actually, I got on the mound and I've, I've done that so a million times and got up there. And I'm good. Oof. Went out, had a clean inning, but like stuff like that, you can't, I don't know how, as a coach or as a parent or friend, what, whatever, until you've actually like been in that moment, how do you, how do you even articulate mm. that pressure or the, it's hard. Can't, there's no way. There's no way. You can't, you can't. You can't prepare for that. Replicate it. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't. Oh, dude. 
right? It's just all, it's all mental. It's all mental, man. Uh, you know, being able to be in the moment and not just like totally swallowed up by like, holy shit, I'm here. It's happening. This is real. You know what I mean? So Yeah, and you, you said too, or we kind of hit on it a little bit, but like we asked if the teammates got better the higher up you got, you know? Or you asked me that before. And I want to I want to say yes because everyone is going about their business, you know, a different way. Um, everyone has a common goal in mind. Baseball is weird, especially in the minor leagues. It's it's team oriented, but it's also selfish. Playing um, against everybody else, dude. Yeah, and we've touched on that before. But if your best buddy went out and made a diving catch in the outfield and went three for four and you know all that, you're pumped for him. But you're like shit. He's is gonna he, be the next guy. Yeah, up, is he ahead dude. of me? Yeah, he ahead he's of ahead me? of me on the depth chart because he because of this performance. Like, and how many you know, times were you were you hitting two ninety, playing unbelievable defense, and then for whatever reason a guy hitting two forty, playing good defense, but he gets called up. Yeah, and you can't. You have no. You're just like what? Yes. And that used to really eat at me when I'm like, hey, my numbers are good, my velocity's good, I'm pitching great. Why did that guy get moved up? But then sometimes you have to look at the bigger picture. Maybe, you know, now with analytics and all that stuff, this guy's fastball plays better against Oh yeah. National League hitting. I don't know. You know, there's always something. It's always, yeah, some stat, some metric, dude. Everything's just tracked and Yeah, dude. But that's uh that's about all I got, dude. That's all I had written down, man. It's nice little uh nice little go at it. What do you think? You got anything else you want to add? No, I mean, I think in that little sheet you sent me, you asked who you know your favorite teammate was, and I had a favorite teammate every year. I mean, every every year it changed. Um, I'd click with a guy, and I was always like, I was always cool with the uh, pitchers and everything, but I was locked on to position players as well. Really? Um, Yeah, every year it changed, and I mean, you become so close with these guys, and then they're released or they're traded or they retire. Um, It was hard. You got to adapt to it. I didn't have just one guy. Um, every year okay. was different, and it makes sense though when you said the the quality of teammate like got better and better and better and better as you progressed up the ladder. It's like you know people are finding out their roles, people are finding out what a what a clubhouse is supposed to be like. People are yeah. experienced in you know what a well run team is like, right from the top down. Uh, you know, you get to the triple A or the big leagues. It's like, you probably know what a, a major league manager is like, you know, what that attitude's like. You've been in spring training, you know, how they kind of converse with their players and, you know, interact. It's like, you know, what a leader of men look like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those, those major league managers lead men and they lead grown ass men and they lead successful grown ass men and they're the best at what they do and they lead them and they, you know, inspire them and they get them they win. all playing on the same page, dude. Yeah. In a perfect world, that's that's what happens. So it's like, I don't know, man. Um, definitely the quality, like the the type of teammate and the type of clubhouse uh, got better and better and better as you got closer to the I mean, pinnacle. Yeah, little things like you lose in rookie ball. You get your ass kicked in rookie ball. There might be music blaring in the... Oh, yeah, where they... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strobe care. lights and shit in the locker yeah, room. Like, it's a it party, matter. dude. Yeah, and you're the, a professional. A coach, depending, you know, the coaches were a little in- inexperienced at the level too, but they might be like, turn that shit off. But the higher up you go, if you if some guy goes and turns on music after a tough loss, I mean, there's there, a baseball is going to fly through that speaker. Yeah. Because some veterans going to be like, hey, that idiot. doesn't fly. Yeah. So, so that will help too. Just back to that the high school player, like at some point, if you're that good and you progress through the minor leagues or you get a chance to even play professional, like you're going to learn, you're going to find out like, you know, the, the showmanship and the sportsmanship. It's like, yeah, I don't know. It's a little different. The higher no, conf- go. confidence is everything like, yeah, but is it a, is it a true confidence or is it a insecure insecurity that you're trying to hide? I could, I think some of the most confident people I've ever been around are also some of the most humble, um, and they practice humility. You know, I, I with age, if I don't know something, tell me about it. Like teach me. But that took a long time for me to develop that humility to ask, like or say, I don't know that. For sure, as a younger kid, a younger man, 
I wanted to be the best at everything. I wanted to be a know-it-all, you know? And now I'm like, I don't, I don't have the answer to that. For sure. I know someone that does. Let me make a phone call. I love it. I love it. All right, dude. That's, uh, I'm going to finish mowing my lawn. I love it. Oh yeah. I'm going to get, get back to reading, dude. So, all right, bro. I appreciate everybody here tuning in. Uh, we will see you guys next week, man. That'll work. All right.